everybody! Welcome to Free Spirit Talks. Give me a second, let me do some... I'm going to throw it over to you while I do some techie shit. Okay. Alright. So, introduce our topic, do all the okay. work. Okay. I get work! Do, I get to do all the work today. No, actually, she's going to do all the work to make sure that a whole bunch of people can actually access this very easily. So, today's topic for us here on Free Spirit Talks is on food, sex, and God. We're yes, about I sex. said <gasps> sex. Can you imagine that? Two women who do, I dare say, love sex and, <laughs> and oh, we it do, is one of my favorite we things. We do love God too. I love and God, yeah. and um, we might love food just a little bit. Just a little bit. And if you can combine the three things mm, into food. one experience, well then, that is just a magical experience. Much like as we go into this whole next 30 minutes or so of, of a talk here, what we're going to be sharing with you is how those three really do play a role in our life and in that creation process and having what I refer to as a fuck yes life and, you know, just that freedom-based living and everything. And what are the, what's the roles of food? What's the roles of sex? What's the role that God has? I mean, we can, we can say, oh, well, I kind of get a little bit into that, but I don't really understand, like, what does food have to do with my manifestation abilities? What does food have to do with outside of my health? What does food have to do with creating? Really, I mean, I know a lot of people are probably like, how does food and sex and, and God go together? They really shouldn't, but it is actually one of the things I talk about the most in my coaching practice is really the integration of these two, they, they're, or three, they're not separate. There's no way to separate. First of all, we just don't separate things as humans like that. We like to think we do. We like to think we can put people and our, our situations and our lives in these boxes of going like, okay, I'm going to put my food and diet over here. I'm going to put God over here in a nice little box because we love to box God in. Yes. Um, and then we're gonna put our sex over here, and we're Way just over there. we're over there. We're not we're not gonna talk about that. No, no. And we're just gonna put it in the box. And then when we want, we'll like open it just a little bit because we're never sample really it. gonna we're not we'll gonna sample it. Sample because we're never really diving deep into it because that would. But just, we're not gonna dive deep into the God either. Because no, because that we're right. just we got that in the box, and we're not diving deep into the food. Because well, we might tr think we're diving deep into the food, but we're really just also sampling it. Really, we just sample it all in our, in the majority of people's lives. Yes. Yes. But when you, if you really look at it, our food is a complete mirror to our sex, and our, our sex is a mirror to how we interact with God, and you can combine that all in a bunch of different ways. You know, it, it really is. It's one of, I worked, uh, with people with body image and and uh, eating disorders and things for a very very long time and it's actually one of the the biggest correlations I saw is how people who are having issues with their 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 food had a complete match to that in their sex now it may not have been how you would think it would be but for example if somebody was restricting their food or getting very rigid on their food they either got really rigid in their, sex. in their sex or their beliefs on God, too. Or it was completely, they wanted to, like, throw up, open the doors because it was, like, it's so rigid over here that they have no freedom. So they feel like they need to, like, burst it open over here, but not in a healthy way, in a, like, in a extreme. gluttonous, extreme yeah. All those, the negative quotes we hear about sex in the Bible, of like, like don't be gluttonous, don't, you know, over, over, um, compensate. And that's what people are doing. Um, and then the re reverse too, when people are not really stepping into their, their sex, you, or, uh, stepping into their spirit, you can see it in their sex. So, and how then, do you I mean, see it? I mean, I deal with these three topics are probably the foundation of, of my coaching practice as well. It's the thing, you know, somebody will come to me for some sexual challenge. That's typically when people walk in the door around or some something around finding their purpose or, you know, just calling in the life that they want and they don't really fully understand what that means to be able to access those things. And I've, I've finally gotten to a point where I'm, I'm 
feel very blessed as I know that you do too, because like my background is actually started with spiritual based coaching, like soul coaching, and then moved into nutritional coaching and then moved into sex coaching. And now I'm at this point in my in my coaching career where I've combined all three together and that's giving this, this kind of a full on life package to it because the three are so important and often what I mean I it, I don't think I have one client that I haven't sat down and had a good deep nutritional conversation mm -hmm. with about you know like what are the foods that you're consuming how hydrated are you how frequent do you exercise what kind of exercise do you do do you know like are you going to yoga and then as soon as as soon as the lights turn back down and you're supposed to just take that five minutes of rest do you like pop up and you're the first one out of the room because you got that next thing to do or are you actually allowing your body to reset and as much like the same thing like you know we have those reset periods after after sex that's that snuggle time mm -hmm. you don't just get up and book it out the door like okay what? thank you what yeah you don't just book it out the door? No, Isn't you're like, that appropriate? Okay, that was I thought that was totally appropriate to be like, okay, I just, I'm going to be, hold on, watch the language because we're on free spray talks. Watch the language. Watch the language. It's a clean channel. Yeah, it's a clean channel. <laughs> but we don't just like have sex with somebody and then are like, peace out, I'll see you next time. Well, that's not appropriate? No. Well, that's I mean, not as far as that's connected like, and if that's like if you're into like you were doing something that I mean that's occasionally okay that happens occasionally but I if that, that is was a consistent filling. much like if you sit down and you just scarf you know you just scarf down your food I'll, I'll never forget there was this there was this man that he I mean he was drop dead good looking really really like he was built well put together. Mm -hmm. So really he's a nice-looking gentleman. Yes, yes, very okay. nice-looking gentleman. Great smile, real go-getter action. You know, make good money, all this different stuff. And I was like, he's really, he's a good-looking guy. Well, luck would have it that I ended up at a group dinner with this man, and I sat there. And one of the things that I used to do, I don't do very often. My clients should be happy that I don't make them do this. But I used to go consistently out to lunch or have like my consults at a coffee shop and encourage people to get food or something. So I would, especially like in my coaching, I always make people go out to, to lunch with me at least once. And it's be not because of the lunch, it's because I wanted to witness them eat their food. All the things that I could learn about them just from eating and mm -hmm. how they dealt with the, you know, the, the wait staff and everything like that. Well, this man who was so awesome, good looking, such a hunk, yummy morsel. <laughs> A yummy morsel. Okay. Hey, we're talking yes. about food yes. and sex, all right? He was a yummy morsel. Until I witnessed him eat. Until I witnessed him eat. So he ordered, I will never forget this moment, because I sat next to him, and I was like, I like go, I like, I'm going to put myself in the right position to sit next to him. Uh -huh. He's single. I'm in an open relationship. This could, like, really. This could work. This could work. Like, this could work. Like, I could at least have some fun experience. So I'm sitting there next to him, and he orders this really nice, big, healthy salad. I'm like, now that's nice. And he gets grilled shrimp on top of it. I'm telling you, like, I really, I was into him, okay? So I paid attention to what I was ordering. Of course so he is. orders, like, grilled shrimp on top of it, healthy salad, and he's sitting there, and he smells good, and he looks good, and he has, like, a decent conversation going on, and obviously he knows his nutrition and everything. He's eating healthy. He's eating, like, fresh and healthy. And then his food is delivered. And he literally grunted at the waiter, who handed to him like, like that, and I'm like, <laughs> it's like taken back a little bit, because here was an intelligent man who just decided to grunt it for as a thank you, I guess, I don't know, and after he grunted, he proceeded to eat his food. Now, a normal person would probably, you know, like, the, it looked good, so it was a pretty display of food in front of him. I'm like, damn, that looks like a good salad. I wish I had ordered that. Mm -hmm. And he just, he literally, his face got about this close to the bowl, like this, and he's like this, like that. And yes, the sound effects were there too, because the, the lettuce was spewing from his mouth oh, and shooting all no, over the place. Oh, no, no, tell just like, me no. Yes, yes, and it was just like, you That's know, awful. like, all the stuff, it was everywhere. And here's the point, he was not being present with his food. He was not being present with his food. He was not enjoying it. He was not, it was not really fulfilling to him. It was just 
him getting the food into him and it was that really quick it was quite literally the we have sex and oh all right peace out bye you know like bye that whole that whole action i'm gonna ask you guys can you guys see here so it looks like we're frozen so can you give us some thumbs up if we are are not frozen (laughs) (laughs) are we not frozen thumbs up did you refresh thumbs yes i refreshed we're frozen. We're not frozen. Okay, I think right. we're good. I think, okay. I think we're back. All right. Yay. Sorry, I thought we were frozen for a second. Okay. So, presence. And, I mean, it really is like, you know, we do this in our sex. We do it with our food. And what else do we do? We go to church. We go to our, our spiritual congregation. Maybe we are meditating. I, I believe that, like, yoga is a spiritual place as well. Those different activities. You know, maybe it's just that we're taking a walk and we're just enjoying nature. Or, we're, like, we just went camping on a girl's yeah. camping trip. And it's like, do you just go boom, boom and completely disregard where you're at because you're so busy with that checklist and that moving to the next, as you so wonderfully put it, that next box that we're going to pull out because this is that next thing that we're doing and we keep everything Mm -hmm. separated. And that's not, yeah, that's just not how, how we want, that's not going to create the fuck yes life or the blissful life like I teach. It's just not, it's not integrating, it's not going, you're, you really are going to find that you're missing out on so much because you're trying to separate all of these pieces when, like you said, I talk about all three of these things probably in a little bit of a different fashion than you do because we're just different people. Uh-huh. We have different backgrounds. And we have too. different backgrounds, but I mean, one of my favorite things to give my clients when we're dealing with getting them to a state of orgasm or really enjoying their sex is to go and first get really present with our food because if you can't eat a strawberry with presence when you're just like sitting there then you're not and really taste it and experience all like the textures and the smells and all that you're not going to be able to fully experience your partner in sex when you have things going on and moving parts and then you're also not really experiencing god you're not really stopping you're not seeing the little beauty in life i actually I wrote a little bloggy blurb thing on my um, my feed the other day, and it was about God romancing us because God is always romancing us, but if we don't stop to see it, if we don't take the time to really get present with it, we're missing it. Mm-hmm. And we how I, seriously, guys, how many of you really stop and taste your food and experience it? Or are you running through the fast food line and you are scarfing down your food and you're going to the next thing? Or are you really enjoying it? And are you putting worth in it? Yes, you might go, oh no, I eat clean. I eat all clean. I, you know, uh, I don't eat gluten. Like have all these rules around your sex, or not your sex, your food. And that's, that's your business. But are you truly a enjoying that or are you doing it in a rules rigid fashion of we do this and then we do this and we don't do this or are you really enjoying that so i think a lot of people we have a lot of rules around our food we have a lot of rules around our sex and we have a whole lot of rules around god as well and so look at it like where are you depriving yourself and then Because guess what, guys? If you're depriving yourself in one area, it's going to show up in another area. So where are you either depriving or binging in other areas? And it's not usually going to be in a good, healthy way. No, because that binging or that depriving actually causes, I mean, one of one of the main sins right lust so we talk about lust and and this is this is a big i don't want to be lustful after somebody else's partner i don't want to be lustful at this but we don't really look at like lust i'm lusting over that food i'm lusting over that you know that freedom that that person has over there or that lifestyle but we do we lust over all these different things and and typically that issue right there comes up from a place of of complete self-sacrifice mm-hmm. in those areas. So we're resisting 
the desires that have basically been placed in our hearts by God, by, by the universe, right? That that soul calling, we're resisting it to that point where now we're acting out negatively towards it, where it's like, yeah. So, you know, I, I know like your background and everything is like all of a sudden you're consuming all this food and then you feel guilty and shameful for consuming all the food. So then what do you do? You either go on a multiple things you go throw up you'd say I'm not gonna eat anything else for the rest of the day I'm gonna now restrict myself from all of this and then I'm gonna go hate gonna, on myself I'm, I'm just gonna hate, hate myself. myself I'm just gonna hate on myself so then every time you look in the mirror you're saying oh I, I'm so fat I'm so ugly I'm so I'm so worthless I'm so Spent blah, blah, years blah. of my life like that it was not <laughs> it was not fun and guess what it wasn't connected to God and I most Certainly was not connected to my sex. But then you look at like, all right, so then you you take that into into our faith. We don't really have a lot of faith in our faith yep. because what we do is we go and we go to church and then we're very systematic about it. So you got like the what I call the you know the the um, the. the the Christmas yeah. Easter crowd. I, like, I couldn't think of the worst. I'm like, what are the holidays? The I'm like, holidays. I'm just gonna crowd. let you go there and just the holiday. I'll work through it. Just yeah. give me a moment. <laughs> it's like too much chemical from exercising and trying to run through the shower and not being very present in the shower. You see? Oh well. <laughs> but <laughs> no. So you know, you got like that holiday crowd that goes to church, and that's quite literally just showing mm -hmm. up because what. Your friends, your family are in church, so that's just what we do. We go to church on, on these days. And then you have consistent people that are going on the days that they go to church, whatever that cycle is. But are you really there for for the lessons, for the opening, for the connection? Or do you believe that you're just that you're doing it for a duty? Because that mm -hmm. right there, you're typically a lot of people. And I've seen this going to church where you're sitting there and they're they're surfing on their phone, they're on Facebook. And they're looking at Facebook or their Snapchat. I mean, God on Facebook. On doing this or something like that. And then, you know, and then they're standing up and they're singing the song. And like, okay, well, that was the exciting part of church. And then they're back to Facebook. You know, and it's just like, I I love Facebook. I love this platform. But it is not, it's not, should not be showing up while we're having sex. Necessarily. I mean, if you, I'm a foodie. I'm a foodie porn person, as I refer to it. Like, I'm always taking pictures of my food. But I take a picture That's of my different. food, I turn my phone off, and I flip my phone over, and I don't look at it. I might, like, let You're me post this right the, this very the way minute. I've me, right. I'm like, I'm just trying to capture the picture in the moment because, well, I'm going to eat it, and it's going to be gone. The same thing, you know, it's like with adventure and everything. But you don't want to, if you're, if you're separating yourself consistently in life, no matter what it is, in, in your sex or in your food or, or in your faith, then you're completely separating yourself from, from yourself. Yes. And that, and from this right here, and when I go like this, I mean, I'm talking about like to your core, to your spirit. And that is like that direct phone line to God. Mm -hmm. Cause, and, and here's the thing, if we're, if we're lusting, if we're, depriving ourselves if we're overindulging to the point that it's making us literally feel sick what's happening is that we're bogging down our system we're causing resistance either emotionally physically mentally some way you know it's like all energetically definitely, yes, definitely. and all three of these are energetic things as well as physical emotional and mental things and it plays a role on all those levels but energetically like if you're eating if you're living at McDonald's and you're going, I'm I'm going to go and completely be zen and tap in and meditate and I'm gonna do this. But so I've got energetically but blocked yourself. What? I can't have like a Big Mac. Thank you. A Big, Big Mac. Mac. I don't eat at McDonald's. <laughs> I think I'm sure everybody's shocked. McDonald's. I don't know. I'm like, if you want to break up with me or really piss me off, take me to McDonald's. That's like mentally you don't even noted. Have, mentally like, noted. Really like, I, I, this is like my thing. If a guy ever says, "Hey, let's go to McDonald's," I'm going, and you want to break up with me, right? Like we're not gonna <laughs> ever see each other again. Like this is your way of just like t letting me off. <laughs> nice, softly, right? softly, like because you know I'm gonna storm out of the car right now. Okay, so, no, it is because there is such a an energy block there. That kind of stuff just knocks us down at a cellular level, which is an energetic level. And the same thing goes when we're not having really good... So, yes, we are sex coaches. Yes, we talk a lot about sex. But 
at the end of the day, we're not talking about this, and this is like your terminology, like that fast food sex. We're talking about a deeper sex that really connects connects us to ourselves, connects us to our partner, gets us into this truly orgasmic, not climactic, but orgasmic space where we're able to really experience not ourselves, but our spirit and God mm-hmm. in that moment and really opening. But a lot of us, I would say, don't, a lot of people I think go into, I'm not worth that. And that goes in your food and your sex and with God, all three of those. A lot of times we don't think we're worth the amazing sex. We might say it, we might go like, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm worth amazing sex. But your actions prove that you really don't believe that you're worth amazing sex if you're not taking the time to really drop it's, down. It's the and worthiness and then it's also the lack of actually knowing, knowing what that well. means. Because there's plenty of times, I mean, I, I have articles out there that I'm not going to state because of the language um, on here, but it has un and the F word in it. Uh-huh. And the keyword in it, hint, 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 an epidemic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, the, and it's just really on that, that, you know, like I had this conversation with a young woman and she was telling me all this different stuff and I was looking, like literally I was looking at her and I just looked at her and I said, well, that's because you're really not having good sex. You're really not allowing yourself to go there. And she's like, oh, what are you talking about? I just had good sex yesterday. And I said, are you sure? And she just what? What do you mean? Are you sure? And then I described really good sex to her. I described the physical, the emotional, mm-hmm. all this connection. And she looked at me and just was like, huh? What are you talking about? And she's like, well, I don't know what that is. I, I've never experienced that before. That's not, that's not what it, I, I don't know what that is. And it was just that moment of, you don't know what you don't know yes. until you something informs you or you experience it. And that's that mind blowing moment. It's like, it is like that that really good piece of, of cheesecake or something that, you know, and you're that like, I've never food. had this, there's this, this depth of cheesecake and flavor there, of, there's a scene in the the, film one of the Matrix movies where, with the French guy, you haven't seen the Matrix movies? I've seen like pieces of them. There's this scene uh, in one of the Matrix so. movies where the French guy, he's like some, some keeper, he like, He's not the gatekeeper, but anyways, he's got a really hot wife, and he's a good-looking French dude and everything, and he can, so he, like, goes in, and he's one of these people that can, like, transform what's going on in the programs of, of the Matrix, right? So they show this woman, and she's eating this, like, chocolate cake, this chocolate tort, and she takes this bite, and he's sitting there, and he's talking about how he designed this cake and the effect that it would have on her. And you see her, like, she is literally making love to this piece of cake, and he's mm, describing it. So he, you before. see her just, like, <laughs> slice this little piece off, and she takes this bite, and she's sitting at a group, you know, and she sits there, and she, you see the cake going to her lips, and it's very sensual and very, mm-hmm. like, I mean, it is one of the most sexy scenes on the planet. And you see her just in just... Oh my gosh. And then he's talking about like they go into the breakdown, like what it's doing to her physically and everything. And it's showing a a matrix level what's happening. And it goes all the way down to her sex and how that turns her on and everything to the point that she had to excuse herself from the table because it was getting too heated Uh all over this bite of cake. And I've I've had these moments. Yes. I know you have because we were out to chocolate one day and she had a chocolate had a moment. She had a moment. Well, it was a good like, moment. I was like, You're well, like, I'm just going to give you a second there. You have fun with that. That piece of chocolate right it there. It was amazing. <laughs> but that's, that's that state of presence again. That's that state of like really getting into it and and having that connection to your food. It's not the scarfing down of the food. It's not the scarfing down of the sex. It's not the scarfing down of the Bible. Of the Bible of or of whatever spiritual text you might yes. might be consuming. It is it is feeling. really feeling and tapping in, and it's not about like oh yeah I read the Bible once a year. Well whoop dee. You know? Are you feeling it? Are though? you feeling it? Is it really actually penetrating you at a deep soul level? And are you feeling God in your daily life, not just when you're reading exactly. the Bible? It, can you find God 
in the little moments. I mean, like I sat outside this morning and I just did a meditation. I decided that I wasn't going to focus in on anything. I was just going to allow myself to just like drift and listen to this music that was deeply inspirational and emotional. So it brought me up and it crashed me down and it brought me up and I just had 15 minutes of it. And as I came out of that, that sounds orgasmic. I sat there and the winds picked up and I have this tree in my front yard. And one of my most like spiritual moments that I just, I love this is when, when the wind kind of just blows through the trees and it just makes me go, and it's like I just mm-hmm. breathe in God in that moment and to hear just the, the leaves and to feel the breeze and to just see everything move. To me, that is like capturing God just in a split second for whatever reason. It really makes me feel aligned and open and surrendered and penetrated. It's God and, romancing and it's, you. It's God it's romancing, God romancing you. you. And it's just it's always been this thing for me that like I, when I'm in a piss poor mood, when whatever I go and I go to find God, to be romanced by God in that moment and really just tap in. Can you do that? Or is it just like, well, you know, in chapter six of John, it says blah, 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 and you got it memorized. Well, whoop i I'm glad that you got it memorized, but what does it really truly mean to you? What is it in us? Are you like, connecting it? Are you connecting? Just like, oh, well, I live really, really well. I eat, I eat all the right foods. I exercise all the time, blah, blah, blah. But are you actually connecting that to your core, to your spirit? And kind of on that note, I would almost say, are you almost a, uh, for lack of a better word, a snob too? Are you judging oh, absolutely. others? Absolutely, I'm a snob. Yeah. I know you're a snob. <laughs> I'm an egg snob, a coffee snob, no. a wine snob, <laughs> a sex snob, I an orgasm what I... snob, <laughs> a god romance me snob. No, but are, like, where are you also judging others in, our, in your life based on your, your, your experiences? So that, I mean, that's kind of off topic a little bit, but also, like, look at... Uh, at that as well and but I do think it I mentioned earlier like the worthiness piece too and I think a lot of us don't believe we're worth the bliss that all of these three things can can really integrate especially when integrated and I don't mean bringing like actual food into the bedroom which that can be fun too but I don't like that's I have a couple that prays right before orgasm like they get into this Kind of into thing. this state, and then they, they right as things are getting close, they actually pause and they pray and they send off like a little prayer, I and then they that. come I back to the actual sexing and have fantastic orgasm. But it, yeah, and but it is really about like co- connecting it all together and realizing it's not separate. I love that they pray before orgasm. That's sweet. That's sweet. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, that's sweet. She's having a moment. That's sweet. It is. I mean, it's really to have I mean, that moment. They're having Together. this very connective, and they're and they're making their sex spiritual. I mean, they're bringing God into the bedroom with them, and that is one of those things that instead of shaming your sex, instead of shaming your food, or just shaming your every day, to bring God in in every way. And that's, I mean, no matter what we are discussing here, I think that ultimately that's probably where we're, where we're kind of like leading. Because if you want to have that, that fuck yes life, that life of bliss, that life of abundance and freedom and joy, and just where you're really claiming it, you're claiming that, that, that yes life. Because I'm a firm believer that we live in a yes verse is what yes. I've been kind yes. of calling it. I'm like, yes. we live in a yes verse. So be careful what you're asking for because it, the universe, God, is always a yes to you. But if you're bringing God into these moments in your life, into these experiences, then you're kind of setting the tone for mm-hmm. it as well. Yes. Because God wants us to have pleasure. God wants us to enjoy and be in bliss. Uh but it, it, we're wanted to also integrate it all and not put it into our little boxes. That's not really enjoying it. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I really challenge everybody to, because I think people could go like, oh, well, I'm not having sex right now or blah, blah, blah. But I think I would really challenge everyone to go, even just today, it's about lunchtime. Like, how present are you going to be with your food today? Where are the moments that you really can stop and be present with God? Where can you have a, a sexual moment with yourself? And I'm not talking about anything 
super sexual I'm talking about, like, can you put on your lotion really, really centrally today and really feel it and be in that energy of your body? Not necessarily having sex, but in that energy that we always have within us is we can always tap into our sex. That does not, we do not have to have a partner to necessarily penetrate into our sex. No. I mean, one of the, and this is like a little, little exercise that I would say, I give this out a lot of the time to women, but for men too, because men kind of get caught up in the whole sexual act as just being a release, mm -hmm. right? And just like food is about just, just getting the, the sustenance in and sex is about release and God is about duty typically. Sorry to say, but that's kind of the way it flows. Yes. So it's, it's like duty, release, sustenance, boom, 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 done, next. And what I have a lot of people do is I'll tell them, you know, I just want you to take five minutes and I want you to touch yourself the way you want a lover to touch you. And that does not mean sexually necessarily. I mean, a lot of the times when I think about the way I want a lover to touch me is, yeah, Again. it's like, it, it, how do I want a lover to touch me? I might, I might find myself like grabbing the back of my hair just so, so, or just finding myself just like, you know, like just kind of holding or, yeah, or, or like something. Or just, yeah. Or like you were talking about like putting lotion on, you know, it's like I was right before I got here, I was in the shower moments before I jumped in the car and I, I missed coconut oil on my skin. So I'm mm -hmm. like, but I didn't rush through putting the coconut oil on my legs. I took the time to actually, you know, like give my, my calves a little bit of a massage, run my hands down and moved slower in those motions because it would be the way I want to be touched by somebody else the way I want to experience life in that present, in that presence. So doing little practices like that can definitely help you become more present. Just like eating. make love to your food today. Make People love to make love friend. to your food, find food that you want to make love to. Yeah. Don't just feel, we don't want to go and I mean, some people are fine with that, but I mean, most people aren't going and finding just, any old person off the street and going like, yeah, let's go have sex. Like, you're okay. You're fine. That's all about release. You're not That's really going to feel me. That's like, like, you're fine. Come on, let's go. Yeah. So why are you doing that with your food? Why are you doing that with your food? Like, because the make drive love with through it. is so easy. Yes, it is. It is. Oh, it's let's be honest. Through like, it is drive easy, through God, but drive it's not, through food. it's not fulfilling. It's not fulfilling. And that's not to say that you can't ever... Yeah, no. By the time I get to the road, I can have two little mini cheeseburgers down. Oh, oh. I just feel sick even thinking about that. <laughs> I so here's the deal. Like, do you uh, always that. have, like, and this isn't <laughs> about always having, like, the perfect food or the per Like, you can, like you said, you were talking about chocolate cake. Like, I can make love to a piece of chocolate cake just as much as I can make love to a salad. Or a burger. Or a burger. Or, like, it's not about deprivation in any of, in the sex, in the God. It's really like good kale, avocado, chocolate milkshake with, no? No, I'm thinking about it. I'm not, it's I'm actually not, really good. I can make that for you. Kale, avocado. Actually, yeah. uh, little spiraling yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some flax. For and, you, and you're going <laughs> to smoothie the recipe today as a bonus. The pumpkin pie smoothie recipe is really good. <laughs> I give that to everybody. <laughs> But yeah, it is, I mean, find the places, and then this is going to, people might go, oh, I can't believe I just said just that. Go make love to God. Go make love to God a little bit. Yes. Bring God into all of these things, but then take some time to just make love to God. And that means, like, you were talking about having that moment, the hair, the the wind blowing in your, in your face, and just really having that moment. That is a, a making love to God and... And all the blessings that he is providing in your life in that moment. Another one is just, you know, going and getting as much um, sun as you can in just a, in a moment. Like, I'm really quick Bless to go ginger, throw on. Kid. I'm really <laughs> quick to go, like, throw on my swimsuit. When, I'm, when I start feeling yeah. wonky and stuff, I will drop everything and I will throw my swimsuit on and I will go and just lay in the grass out back. And just because it's like, I need the ions from the earth. Number one, I realize that I need that. So my body actually physically needs that kind of care. But then the other thing is, is that when the sun is just 
you know, connecting with my skin and I feel that warmth and I feel that sensation and my mm-hmm. heart rate actually increases because the hotter I get from the sun, the more my, my blood is moving and all this different stuff. It's like I'm really connecting into that moment. I and then, that. you know, it's like, then there's just like this breeze that comes up and we all know how I feel about breezes now. So it's like this breeze comes up and it's this really, really connective to spirit, to God mm-hmm. moment. So finding whatever that is in your in your life that 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 God turn on. Yeah, that's what it is. And again, you don't. This doesn't all have to be perfect. Like if you need, you might probably. We all need to do processing in all of these areas. No one's got it, got it a hundred percent. Yes, so, I do. No, you perfect. don't. No, perfect. you don't. I'm so perfect. I know. Shh, stop it. I'm judging. This is what happens when you do <laughs> lives with people you know really well because they call you out on your shit and you're not perfect. <sighs> get this all messed up now that's okay um but (laughs) no we're all we are all like you're gonna have to continue to process this stuff so that's what i mean go find somebody if you're really i know there are a lot of people who really struggle with their sex really struggle with their food and really struggle with with their spirituality and that's when you reach out and you you find somebody who like us or somebody else that knows and can kind of guide you on on that path to, to digging deeper and knowing what you don't know. So, and then also I have two books here that I absolutely adore. So instead of quotes today, you just get full books. So yeah, full this, books. this is Kendall's Finding God Through Sex by David Dita book. We love David Dita here. Love that book we love too. David Dita. Love that he book. is amazing. Um, and then I love this book, Women, Food, and God, for those women out there. And it, it goes with men, too, but but it's really focused on women um, and how to connect your food with God and how God meant for us to really consume. So, so yeah. But on a – we're kind of running, coming to a close, so I want to do a shameless promo. Yep, shameless promo. I don't care. So I yeah, have – I have a, uh, my Instantly Orgasmic Woman program just relaunched today, and this program has so much content in it, and so right now it is at a really low price, but I'm about to pop it up in the next week or two, so go jump in. It's going to teach you how to really connect with your body if you're a woman, really step into that deeper level of orgasm that we were talking about, and so get out of society's kind of programmed view of sex and how good sex can actually be so please check that out you can check that out on my um my website www.absonbell.net and then it's on my pages and all that so you can find and it. i just i'm gonna give you a little woo-hoo because she let me have like a little 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 sneak peek i'll we'll call it she let me have access a little to like, hey, <laughs> how does this look? That's what it was like. How does this look? What do you think? That kind of thing. So as I was looking through, I just want to say that knowing, knowing Addison and knowing what the content is for that particular um, course that she has that she's launching here, I just want to say, wow. I don't know what you have it listed as. As I don't know what your price is, and I don't know what your currently like, at ninety six. $96. Okay, well, I was going to say like $900, but... It's not $900 <laughs> because I really believe in this content. I really do, and I want to get it, make it affordable for people, honestly. And, and I and I get that. I'm just saying that so. from so one, one coach viewing another coach's stuff, and I wanted to say that I think that, well, you're way underselling it, and yay for anybody who takes advantage of it. Yeah. But I really, knowing, like, I don't know how many hours it totals up to, but I bet it is probably well over $1,000 worth yeah, of content. Yeah, it's a lot of content. There's a lot yeah. of content. You get downloads, all of that. So it is a great program. Please go out and at least check it out um, for yourself or for the woman in your life. So what yeah. do you, Miss Kendall, have going on? Anything you want to shamelessly promo? You got lots of. Stuff. I know. I'm like, you got lots of stuff. Like, uh, shamelessly promo. If you're in the penal just... area this weekend, we have a workshop coming up called Deshaming the Lotus. <laughs> this is what like hers is shamelessly promo. No, <laughs> all right. So yes, yeah, so we have the Deshaming the Lotus for any ladies um, that are around the DFW area. But the one thing that I'm kind of putting out there, I don't have the write-up done, so I'm kind of like doing this. So I'm kind of throwing teasers out. Is that I'm going to be in Maui 
I know that's really rough. I'm going to be in Maui for two weeks in July. Oh, stop with the sad face. <laughs> She's trying to get my luggage. I'm I am. in Maui for, for two weeks in July visiting my eldest two daughters out there, and I'm taking all my kids and everything. But I'm going to be doing a two-week um, coaching course from different beaches in Maui. So I'm calling it Bikini Coaching for Abundance or something like that. Like, I don't even know the title totally worked out. I've got things so on. But I'm but, sure it'll be amazing. Yeah. So what I'm going to be doing is it's going to be 16 hours worth of manifestation content and how to create that fuck yes life. And I'm going to just be beach hopping and waterfall hopping. So I thought, what so a great hard. way to so hard, kind of show <laughs> off one of my favorite places in the world because Maui is like my third, fourth home at this point. I just love Maui. And there's all these beautiful places that people don't even get to really experience because they get stuck in all the tourist spots. I'm not going to be in the tourist spots very much. I'm going to be more in the local um, sweet spots, we'll call them, of, you know, where there's high spiritual content and it's just great energy. So I'm going to be teaching from those places and over the next, over that two week time frame, really sharing 16 key lessons to creating that fuck yes life. So that will be coming out. If you want to be in on the the initial launch, which is going to be, um, gosh, I think it's like $5,000 off. Here's the time. It's like, it's going to oh, wow. be $5,000 off. Because once I, get, once I get this whole course wow. put together and I get done with it, it will be selling for probably, I'm probably going to, I mean, I'll always do that at a little bit of a discount, but it's probably going to be going out for about $4,600 is will be the actual course once I get that out there. So I'm gonna be doing a humongous discount on the front side, so it's under $1,000. Oh my I'll gosh. Just mention that. It's under $1,000. That's a lot of coaching. Out. If you're it, doing, that's a lot of coaching. It's gonna be a lot of coaching that's for a, a coaching. well, it's two weeks, and it's 16 hours, plus a whole bunch of downloads, and a whole bunch of, you know, oh, wow. a bunch of journal prompts, and manifestation, and there's meditations in there, and there's all this different stuff that I'm putting in. So it's gonna be like a massive, massive coaching course that so I'm going to be doing, that. plus, beautiful scenery and all that stuff just kind of selling the dream there a little bit so if you want in on that front promo of that just pop me a message one way or another here on facebook or if you have my cell phone number text me or um emailing so all right there you go well, that's my shameless promo. that's amazing <laughs> here's my shameless promo <laughs> All right, well, it has been awesome seeing you, you people, and please continue to comment. We will check in on comments if somebody's watching this afterwards and still has a question or even just wants to, to share something. We, would, we always love to see your comments, and um, we would really appreciate it if you would like Hit and share, button. share Hit because share button. Facebook doesn't... Um, the algorithms yeah. on Facebook, like people sharing because it yeah. says hey that was valuable that was worth something so you can really help us keep free spirit talks going and promote but and you just support us it's a very easy way to support us and give us some yes. love and appreciation by hitting the share button saying hey that's a great talk you got to listen to these two crazy chicks because we are crazy chicks so. yeah. well we hope you have a great rest of your week and we will see you in two weeks for another free spirit talk bye everybody